Hello, hello, and welcome to a new week and a new animals as messengers, your weekly energy spiritual forecast. And uh, it's a full moon today. And as you know, we've been doing a lot of inner work to heal our ancestral and our familial intergenerational trauma lines. And I know it's been rough going for many of you. But just know that Saturn is here. And if you just think about Saturn, it has the ring around it. We can either see it as um, like a cocoon that, that creates safety for us, or we can, if we're over in this, we can start seeing it as a lot of constriction or, or feeling of, of being trapped in a sense. So just know that Saturn is here and it's helping us to see what in the past needs to be completed and released and we have neptune as well and you just think about neptune coming up and you know he's really the visionary and he's he's asking us to look into the future so getting intimate with our emotions if that's even possible to get even deeper into um allowing ourselves to feel in order to heal um this is the time to really get in touch with those wounded child parts that are are really asking to be brought home to your heart and 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 loved back into being and really honoring of the feminine this week it's all very key so just be aware of where you may be checking out um, in busyness or distraction instead of really staying in your body and really checking in um, to that internal resourcing um, of how you create safe um, embodiment right staying in your body because we want to be very aware of where we might be confusing fantasy and insanity and the signs and assignations and all those good things um, and and fear that a lot of times that brings up with your intuition uh, this full moon is very powerful this week because it's uh, conjunct with the galactic center so great time to get out in the sun um, out under the moon uh, tonight and just set the intention to to really allow yourself to feel everything and to also know what you want um, we we know that any any full moon is very powerful for bringing those watery emotions up to the surface so to the surface and it's really going to with the alignment this week to um, really magnify those source points that connects us to to our greatest truth and higher wisdom and and this expanded consciousness so um, access those those very high high realms um, the higher version of ourselves is all in the DNA blueprint it's already there um, and it's just for you to actually realize it now and really embody, I think, a better, better understanding, a higher understanding that it's up to each of us uh, to stay in truth and trust that we have everything that we need inside of us, right? That we are resilient, that we've everything you've done this far has got you to where you are and who you're becoming. And it is kind of like that rite of passage that we're moving into again of a new walkabout with a, a sort of wider perspective so that we can create the future that we want that's very much grounded in love. And I don't know if you can hear the Heidi Gars going home. The sun is setting here. So just remember that all your unresolved trauma will come up. Um, so stay very compassionate um, if you're feeling triggered in your inquiry and then instead of falling back into the into those old sort of defensive or protective beliefs and projections and assumptions just notice where you go when you're going there and um just know okay am i doing this from a place of love just trust that everything that is happening right now is happening for your highest good and with that, I'm going to just go in. And I just love this. You know, you can't make it up. You really just can't make make this, this stuff up when it comes up um, in the cards. And today I did things a little bit different, differently. I pulled from my White Lion Leadership cards um, as the anchor cards for this week. And it's a very ex existential um, card, this, this, um, this anchor card. So, you know, use this as a stake um, in your, your revelation. Um, you know, just think about what revelation means to you. Um, we're learning to to follow our own truth, to follow our own inner guidance and uncover where we have 
perhaps been um, not seeing things with clear sightedness. So where we're, um, we're not willing to see what needs to be seen. And I spoke about this yesterday, but just remember that the, the, the truth is, is always better than the lies. Um, I always say I don't like secrets or societies with secrets or places where we're, we're in childhood. If we feel like um, we had to keep a family secret of perhaps mental health or alcoholism or some dysfunction in the family as a secret, there's nowhere where you can actually find support from that. So, you know, this is really the time to actually look at where you're, where you have been lying to yourself and perhaps where you've been deceived by others and to just trust the process because the truth is always better than lies. The card that, that is the action card for Revelation is this beautiful um, card, which is the Lioness Mara. Um, of Timbavati and her message is always um, one of, of really deepening into intuition and for those of you that that joined me last week you know this was all about decalcifying the pineal gland to actually take away all these layers and veils and um, I want to say programmings that have kept the truth from you and Mara's really really her message is always to to listen more than we speak um, and to use our telepathic powers, right, to listen to, to our gut knowing and also to, um, to look at where perhaps um, due to all the triggers that have been coming up and um, a lot of deception coming up to the surface, either where we have self-deceived ourselves or like been lying to ourselves or where others have been lying to us and maybe going back into that old story of not trusting, um, in, in our gut knowing, in our intuition. Mara really says always stay open and listen and, and even if it's to your own internal voice, hi Andrea, um, to be compassionate um, and to use and to trust and believe that you, you came in born with a very heightened sense of um, nonverbal communication. So if you have had misunderstandings or you, you've had blocks or challenges or alienation due to um, misunderstandings in verbal communication, just increase your compassion this week. And if you've had any sort of feelings of loss or rejection because of all the communications that you've been having, just, just remember that you, you can't hide the truth, right? And we need to see truth with a very compassionate inquiry that's non-judgmental. And also to trust in the insight, right? To turn turn your, your, your seeing eye inward and to trust the, in divine timing. So again, patience and allowance in sometimes we need to sit and listen um, to our internal dialogue as well as what's, what's um, being communicated to us from other people before we respond. So just take that into mind as your anchors for this week um, with all these intense energies that are coming up. And oh, I love this, you know, the synchronicity of these cards. You just can't make this stuff up. Um, when you ask for divine support from the energetic realms, from the angels, from your um, animal guides, you always get what you're asking for. And I think, again, it's really important to, to keep ourselves open um, to what is being gifted to us. And isn't this the most beautiful fox you've ever seen? And I just love the energy of fox. You know, there's a playfulness about fox. And he's also known in, in tarot as the, as the trickster or the prankster energy, which kind of ties into um, your anchor cards for this week. So, you know, Fox for me brings up this energy of agility, of being able to pivot, right? To adjust how we're, we're maybe showing up and responding to life and how we are co-creating in the universe. This is about thinking on your feet. Um, if you just think about the swiftness of Fox, you know, one minute he's there and the next minute he's gone. He's the an illusion um, of, of, this trickster prankster energy where you almost think your eyes are playing tricks on you. So look at where you need to be more flexible, perhaps in your boundaries and in also your um, 
your meaning making of things where maybe you need to change your circumstances and you you have a little bit of doubt there so look at where you may be playing a trick on yourself right the trick of the eye the trick of um, the mind and remember that you are much more resilient and stronger than you give yourself credit for so use your intelligence your divine intelligence that intuitive telepathic gut knowing that's in you and move with grace you know you can really use the medicine of fox to um, to your advantage you know it's just to be able to see all the situations and the opportunities that are available to you and don't overthink things don't hesitate right when we look at procrastination there's always fear of moving into the unknown so ask for for fox medicine to support you in in widening your perspective to think outside of the box and be very clear as well about what you are wanting to co-create under this new full moon in the direction of south this month this this week we have groundhog spirit i mean he's just the cutest little guy um and i love groundhog too because you just think about groundhog day or that movie groundhog is saying based on the anchor cards and the fox and these planetary aspects right now of the full moon you have to stop pretending not to know trust what you know stop lying to yourself when you're perhaps saying, oh, maybe you need a little bit more time um, to let things go that aren't working for you anymore. Groundhog says go inward, right? go underground, go into the shadows and look at what you know needs to end. Right? I spoke about this yesterday again, about we have to befriend death. We need to know that in order for things to to grow, in order for new opportunities to come in, we have to empty our cup. We have to let the old things that are no longer working for us to, to literally die off. We have to let go, knowing that in every ending, there is opportunity for a new beginning. But you can't, you can't um, come from an empty cup either, and you can't also receive new opportunities if your hands are full. So d remember, death is a part of life, and you know, death is something that I think we all avoid. And you might want to look at my video I did the other other day about yes, darling, you do get to grieve. Um, this is the death of dreams. This is the death of um, you know a business venture that might not not um, be going or or it align to your sole purpose we have little deaths all the time the petty morts are there even in orgasm but in every orgasm there is a time for rest and regeneration and out of the old out of the death we we, we create right food almost for the worms we go back into the earth and we need to really fertilize our garden and accept that in the death, just as the leaves are falling off the trees, the tree doesn't have, you know, go into a depression because it's losing its leaves. It knows that its energy in wintertime has to go down to the roots and that all, all the goodness that comes from the dropped leaves is going to feed the root system of that tree again. And that's very much how we, we, we need to see death and embrace death as part of our natural cycle through life. So accept accept the natural endings of things let go of things that are no longer serving you i know that it's 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 our natural desire to want to hold on to the things that are safe and familiar in fact our nervous system our amygdala our ego it's wired for predictability it doesn't like things to change which is not a very good place to be when you're wanting to create something new so you know look at what needs to 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 be let go to be surrendered um, to make space for the new to grow um, and and call on ground talk um, his medicine is very powerful in, in, in helping us to let go of things um, and also to trust that change is coming to so stop resisting and trust in divine trust in spirit trust in the medicine of groundhog um, to prepare yourself that something far better than you could ever imagine possible is already on its way right don't flog a dead horse okay again it comes back to that anchor card of revelation and the action of really tuning in and listening 
to what is required for you to be able to see these new opportunities come to you and stop lying to yourself. Oh my gosh, we haven't had wasp yet this year and I love wasp medicine. So the rite of passage again, in order to take those dreams out of the ethers, into the earth and in to the physical, we have to sometimes look at wasp as the medicine of, again, in letting go, in, in grieving, in forgiveness, in the cycle of learning through death. Life stings, it's painful, it's a painful process, but there is a, a gift in, in, in the afterburn, so to speak, you know. We know that if a bee or a wasp stings us, it burns for a while, but our bodies know how to assimilate that poison and actually strengthen our immune system. You know, wasps are very good in maintaining a natural balance um, and they also support new growth. So yes, just as, as sometimes the balance is disrupted um, and yes, we get disappointed. Yes, sometimes life stings like a wasp, but it's always going to lead you toward better. Right? It's going to lead you to your highest, greatest version of yourself and to trust again that spirit has a plan. So WASP is a beautiful medicine to also always to look back, you know, look back on some of the places where life didn't work out the way that you had wanted it to. And yet in the disappointment, in, in the readjust, readjusting, in using that pivot of being able to move flex, um, with flexibility of fogs, what did come through the mess in the message, right, in the learning process is something far greater than you could ever imagine possible. So that is it for this week. Um, a really strong theme about um, staying in, in your truth, uh, trusting what you know, uh, listening to your intuitive process, um, using your powerful telepathic abilities. It's a muscle like anything more. So the more you train it, the more you have very strong intention about what you it, what what it is that you're asking for to come through. Um, the easier and the more graceful the f the flow through uh, everything that you're asking for um, to come through. And I wanted to just end this this week's um, transmission with a beautiful prayer um, that comes from the Seven Sacred Flames by Ariella. And I love this, and it just seems so apt. So if you want, you can close your eyes, put your hand on your heart. Ah, just take a few nice, relaxing breaths. And in the name of love, wisdom, power, by the authority and victory of my own beloved I Am Presence, I demand and command every cell, every atom, every space between the electrons, the solitons, the quarks of my physical body to blaze with the sting of wasp. And I'm sort of add, adding to this right now. But with the sting of wasp, the sacred fire of invi vi invincible love and healing flames from my beloved I Am Presence and the ascended masters of light, I ask for the action of the law of forgiveness for every transgression of the law of love in my daily life and the past. I command the invincible flames of purity, of protection, of resurrection and healing to blaze through my physical body, my emotional body, my etheric, my catheric, my mental, my inner child parts and my body elemental daily and hourly. In the name of love, I command my full intention of mastery and victory over all outer conditions in my life to be made manifest. I ask also for the opening and return of all my spiritual gifts. I call upon the law of forgiveness for my errors of the past. I extend forgiveness to all the souls I have ever hurt in any way, shape, or form. In this lifetime, and any other lifetime across all time, space, dimensions, and reality. I also extend my forgiveness to all souls that have ever been hurt by me, and I call upon the eternal flame of cosmic love to seize these energies to be drenched in the fires of the violet flame 
and ascension flame. I give thanks for this healing. Beloved I am, beloved I am, beloved I am. I am the light, the light I am. I am the love, the love I am. And so it is. Uh -huh. Have a great week. Let me know what's happening in your life. Let me know what your rituals are that you're going to do under this very powerful full moon. And if I can support you anyway, anyway, you know how to get hold of me. Um, if you know somebody that might be looking for this, please like it, share it, and spread the love. And uh, in case nobody told you today, I see you, I love you, and I honor you. Go be amazing because you are. All right, take care, everyone. Bye. Mwah. Mm-hmm.